Hello and welcome to another video where we're going to look at another Suicide Boys project file. Uh, today we're looking at Resistance is Useless. So like usual I'll just play the song and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Yeah, I quite like that one. Um, it's one of those rare beats where a sample can actually give you uh, an A-B section, which is important when you're, well, less so nowadays, but typically when you write a song, you do want an A section and a B section, you know, like verse, chorus kind of thing. But for this kind of song, I guess it doesn't really matter, but it's still nice to hear it. Um... I would say it's a good example of just letting the sample do its own thing. It's a good sample and why change it when it kind of does what you need it to do? It's got that cool vibe. It's got a nice tempo to it. Yeah, not bad. Um, I guess technically it's like two and a half sections because you have this one here with the sample just playing by itself and then you have another section which I guess just kind of finishes off the first section and then I would say this is its own section. Yeah, there's a good amount of contrast between how busy the sample gets here and then when it goes back into this, it makes for a good sort of uh, transition point. I'll just play it all together. Yeah, but uh, the sample itself, I don't really think there's much being done to it. Let's have a quick look. Um, typically what I'll do is I will just record as much of the sample as I think is necessary from the internet uh, through my USB interface. Um, if you're looking to get a new USB interface, I recommend getting one with a, a built-in feature called loopback, which is basically where you can record what your computer is doing. Um, the only thing I would say though is if you do that, you do need to make sure that when you're recording into a channel, for example, if I'm recording into this channel, you do need to mute the channel. Otherwise it will be recording what it's recording and it'll just create this horrible sound, this horrible feedback loop. Um, and the only way to get rid of it is just to keep the channel muted. So just remember to do that but look back is such a good feature um, yeah so we have a bit of compression here you can see there's a bit of the squeeze compressor going on this this built-in compressor for the mimic device is great it's a one knob compressor um when I was learning how to do mixing and things like that, you always think that you want the most complicated devices. But honestly, if I, if I get a compressor that sounds good and it's just one knob like this, I'm going to use it. Yeah. I think you can hear a bit of bit crushing in that. That is not me doing that. Uh, 
No, I think that's just built into the sample. Listen. I can emphasize it with this. See those weird kind of artifact sounds? You can hear them faintly in the background. Yeah, so I think we're, that's pretty much the sample. It's just played at the tempo that it's recorded at. A um, bit high cut on it, on this one at least, because I think that's where it's being layered. Yeah, and then we just compressed it with some of this lovely free reverb, which you should definitely download if you haven't already. Uh... This is a Blade Runner reference for you youngins out there who have never seen the film. The old one's the best one. Let's move on to the vocals. Yeah, they really liked their compressors back then, didn't they? In the I'm assuming yeah, in the nineties. They just love to compress the crap out of their rap songs. I don't know why. It doesn't sound very good. <laughs> but uh when you filter it like this and add some bit crushing It makes me quite glad that they compressed it as much as they did, because now I don't need to do it. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, with this sort of thing, the reason I think this combo works really well, you know, like a sample and then some sort of like backing vocals, the reason it works so well is even though they're using the same sort of uh, frequency range, like this, you can see it's quite broad, it goes kind of everywhere. It's all kind of all over the place, but did you know that, well, it's kind of obvious when I point it out, but human ears are obviously designed, or, or your your brain listens in such a way that, it, that it's easier for you to pick out uh, human speech through other sound than it is for other sounds, like music, for example. So that's why when you kind of play things on top of it like this, it's still quite easy for you to hear the... Uh, the vocals because your brain is basically forcing you to hear it obviously that combined with the fact that this has got a, the vocals have got a much faster rhythm and the sample is slower they just kind of bounce off of each other quite nicely and then i think we have another yeah there's a little vocal sample here yeah, I couldn't uh, really get it as clear as it was in the original sound, in the original song. It's like that woo, woo, sort of thing. Um, yeah, it's a scrim beat, so I'm assuming he just uses the actual vocal tracks and, you know, it's his song. Uh, but that's what I did. And just, just filtered it a bit. That's all. Oh, and uh, got rid of some of the Got rid of all those nasty transients with a bit of imaging on the end. Drums. Uh. Why make drums complicated when you cannot and just have some uh, nice saturation and a bit of, uh, bit of soft clip on it? just to bring it all together. Yeah. 
there's like a reverse hi-hat thing that goes along with the drums. It's just this hi-hat sample here, which I just played backwards. Otherwise it sounds like the same. <laughs> oh, that's because I put an envelope on it. Anyway, reverse it. Just changes it a bit. Sublab for a good old 808. Uh, this macro up here, just to emphasize the distortion. Makes it sound crisp in the high frequencies. Uh, low pass filter with a resonance peak, quite a strong resonance peak. That's kind of it. Uh, parallel compression, which you can do by just compressing the track quite a lot. Which actually sounds quite good, but then you just turn down the dry wet. There we go. Bit of OTT. I'm pretty sure OTT, oh you can't see it. I'm pretty sure OTT just does a similar sort of compression to this one knob compressor here, but with more settings basically. Uh, yes, and then limiting. I'm not a mastering engineer by any stretch, so I'm I'm not exactly uh, a pro at using uh, compressors or uh, limiters and things like that, but I just do what I think sounds good because it makes it louder. So... And I like seeing all the pretty red lines. Because obviously if there's lines, then you know you're doing it right. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, should we play it once more? Let's play it once more. Music is so simple when you break it down like this, isn't it? Just a couple of things playing at the same time, but it's just how you put them together that's the hard bit. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching, and like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more like this. See you in the next one.